Doing some streaming to talk about the threat for some stronger storms across the area. This afternoon, we've decided to continue our weather alert day through Monday until a cold front passes the area and we get some improvements. My name is Craig Moeller. I'm a meteorologist here at 13 News Now in Norfolk. And I'm glad you're with us this afternoon. Hopefully you are having a good Monday. It has been a scorcher. That has been the big talk for Hampton Roads and around the region. And really a good chunk of the United States just sweltering with the heat over the weekend. Yesterday we had a high of 99 degrees. The heat index values were up around 105 and the National Weather Service had a heat advisory up. That 99 tied our record high. So yesterday was a scorcher and today still very, very humid out there ahead of a cold front coming through. That front will come through and usher in much drier conditions. So yesterday and Saturday we had weather alert dates up for the heat and the humidity and just the, the physical danger folks were dealing with with uh, the very hot and humid conditions. Today, we've decided to leave the weather alert day in place until this front passes the area and the threat for storms is passed. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have out there. Again, storms potentially later this morning and through the afternoon. So the best chances are going to come up, let's say between 11 and 5. We're dealing with high humidity right now. There's been a lot of lightning with some of these storms and we have the potential for some heavy downpours. You take a look again, the timing for the showers and storms uh, most likely between right now and say five o'clock this afternoon. They may linger a little bit later down into North Carolina. Again, we have the potential for strong storms. There could be a few severe storms and we're going to revisit again the severe weather outlook. We are under a level one threat, so we need everybody to stay weather aware. I'm going to take you back to that graphic I just showed you very quickly here just to show all those areas shaded in the green on that map all under a level one threat as identified by the Storm Prediction Center out of Norman, Oklahoma. You can see that does include Southside Hampton Roads back through Isle of Wight, Southampton, Franklin areas out towards Emporia and on south. And that area extends down along coastal North Carolina. So that's what's going on right now with that. As we take a look at the conditions out there across the region, it really hasn't been terribly bad so far today, but it is still so humid. So when you look at the current temperatures here at 11 o'clock, this is what we have for you across the region. Temperatures have been in the mid 80s and we're going to reach highs today generally in the upper 80s. That's not so bad, but again, it's still very humid. The uh, dew point temperatures have been in the mid 70s to upper 70s. So this is what it feels like right now in Suffolk. The current heat index value is at 97. It feels like 95 out in Smithfield. You have a heat index value of 93 in Virginia Beach, low 90s for Newport News, 94 around Elizabeth City, and down around Edenton, they are heavily influenced by the moisture kind of coming off the rivers and the sound right there, the Albemarle. It's feeling like 104. So a lot of heat and humidity across the region, and that is still an issue but things are going to change. We'll take a couple live sky views. That's our priority automotive sky view looking over the Jordan Bridge. Still dry there as we're taking a look at conditions. We did have some showers and storms earlier today. Again, some very intense rainfall. Would you believe at some points early this morning, the rainfall rates as estimated and measured by the radar indicating up to about three and a half inches per hour. That's how hard it was raining. Now that rain has been progressive. It's been moving through. And again, it wasn't one of those things where it just camped out for a long time. If that was the case, we would have had flood advisories and flood warnings all over. But those heavy downpours, they were rolling at about 30 miles per hour. So they were moving along. And again, that certainly had things a little bit nicer. As we take a look at what's happening out there right now, I want to get back in to the downtown area. It's a little hazy. You can see that as we've got our tower cam right now zoomed in over to the marine terminals. Let me pull back out and I'm going to give you a more traditional look from our tower camera. As we zoom the camera around, it's going to reset its uh, view and pull back out to show you the downtown Norfolk area. 
with the overcast conditions. That's a look back across Portsmouth there. We are seeing some peaks of sunshine, and that's going to act to further destabilize the atmosphere as we go across the uh, early afternoon. So that should help create the opportunity for a few more showers and storms. At the airport right now, we are looking at temperature of 84. I mentioned that that dew point in the mid 70s, 74. So very hot, very humid. And right now the stage is being set for those potential heavier downpours. Once we get those popping up, there's a good chance we could see some very heavy, locally heavy rain with that. So that's something we're going to be watching for very carefully. Now we're looking at the satellite and the radar images, and this is the very latest on that. As we take a look, I do want to show you, again, the area is going to be uh, you know, one of those things where we deal with the showers and the storms. I think as we go through the afternoon, it's really not terrible for everybody all at once, but I do expect a cluster or two of very intense rain to develop. Now I'm going to zoom in here and take you into Virginia Beach and you can see where some of that intense rain is. We had a lot of lightning earlier. Right now, just a handful of strikes as this intense rain is impacting areas around Pungo, back up towards Sand Bridge. You can see Sandpiper Road, the north end there, getting some pretty intense rainfall. And that extends back up along General Booth Boulevard. So this is moving along, and it's moving quickly. Let me put uh, time on the back edge of this so I'm going to do, rather than show you when the rain starts, I'm going to show you as this is moving off to the east, uh, northeast at about 35 miles per hour. It should be winding down here at Pungo around another three, four minutes or so. Uh, Woodhouse Corner, you're on the back edge of it as well. Sand Bridge, the back edge of this should be clearing your area within the next 10 minutes or so. So we're going to watch this cell race along very, very quickly here again with our live radar. Now, as we take a look at some other parts of the year, let me pull back out, seeing a few more cells just popping up there around Moyoc, just south of uh, the state line there between Virginia and North Carolina. You get down to Moyoc there, just along the border. We've got some pretty intense rain around Northwest River and Northwest River Park. Uh, Indian Creek Road kind of on the cusp of a little cell right there. So I mentioned you see a little something down there around Blackwater. But we're starting to see some more development, and this is closer to the front. So these are the areas we're going to be watching for very, very carefully uh, as we take you through the uh, next hour to a couple of hours. We're going to see some more development here, and eventually these should really develop into the early afternoon. This cell just north of Rushmere, again, moving along. Let me take you back one hour in time, and as we do that, you're going to be able to see just how this thing has moved along. I'm going to back this up just a little bit. So now I'm going to take the radar backwards, and you see right there about a half an hour or so ago, around 1035, 1040. Let's see what time we started to see that cell popping. Okay, right around 1040. So in the last half an hour, it went from the central part of Smithfield to where it is now. When I put our uh, measuring device on this from Central Smithfield to here, you can see in the last half an hour it went about 30, uh, say about 17 miles or so. So in an hour on that projected pace as we continue to go back half an hour to there, you see the development there. That was 17. So let's double that and say this is moving along at about 35 miles per hour. So a little bit of quick math for you there. And as we put this cone on this moving to the east at about 35, you've got some intense rainfall that's going to fill in over the peninsula. Now, it may or may not extend that far north up towards Seaford, but if it does, within the next 21 minutes or so, it should be reaching Seaford, some of that more intense rainfall. You might see some light sprinkles ahead of that, but that gives you a feel for that. Uh, we could see some intense rainfall around Big Bethel by, say, 1128. I think areas like Menchville and Oyster Point seeing that heavy rain from this cell ahead of that. So around city center, uh, you're going to start seeing that rain picking up within the next 10 minutes or so. If it holds together and continues to spread a little farther to the south, it might reach the downtown Hampton area around 1137. And Picosin, love Picosin, 1136, that's when you would be in line for that intense rainfall. So that just gives you a little feel for what we're tracking right now with that 
one cell right there. Again, we're going to be watching for more development. We're really just getting things started. I'm going to show you a little more development down to the south around Roanoke Rapids. Uh, you're dry for now, but you're seeing some showers and cells popping up a little farther to the uh, to the east southeast there. So Northampton County, North Carolina, you're seeing a little bit. Hertford County, you're dry for now, but those cells will push towards a Husky and Murfreesboro in a little bit. We're getting some more down around Palmyra, so we're going to watch for that. Now, I do anticipate more showers and storms popping up as we go over the next couple of hours. I can put the wind particles on right now, and this is just based on a model, but basically what we have, a slow-moving cold front that is going to push through the area. As I put this on here right now, you can see it's kind of in this general area. I know that's kind of a, a crude drawing there as it just kind of plopped it onto the map for you but you can see the leading edge kind of right in there just to give you some kind of reference as to where that front is. And it's going to be associated with this slow moving front that we see some more development. So that's what's out there right now with this approaching front. Maybe the front's just a little bit farther out to the west. And again, those fronts as you go higher in the atmosphere slope back over the cooler air a little bit. Now this isn't so much about bringing in a big cool down and I want to jump back on camera here to talk to you. So let me come back to this and I'll come back up here. This isn't about like, oh, much cooler air coming in. Temperatures today are going to be in the upper 80s for Hampton Roads. Tomorrow I expect temperatures to be close to 90. So you're going, well, what kind of a front is that? It's really the boundary for much drier air. So while we have dew points right now in the mid 70s, once that front comes through later tonight, that front's going to clear the area. Drier air comes in. That's going to allow temperatures tomorrow morning to be in the low 70s. We were in the upper 70s this morning. Inland areas away from the coast, they're not going to be in the low 70s. They're going to be in the low 60s. So it will be much, much cooler tomorrow morning for those inland areas, and we will all enjoy a break from the humidity. That's the big news with that front coming through. But as we go back to the maps and take a look here again at the radar, you can see again we are seeing a little more activity. So let me take the wind off here, show you maybe a few more lightning strikes coming up right now uh, over parts of Virginia Beach and this is getting near the ocean front. Remember a storm does not need to be severe to be dangerous. Any thunderstorm that produces any lightning at all can be problematic. Obviously for beachgoers, folks out on the boats, they really need to stay weather aware. You know, a great way to do that is to download the 13 News Now app. Some of you are watching right now on our 13 Plus. Uh, that app, a great way to stay up on everything. Of course, we also have YouTube streaming here, and that's a great way to stay up on the weather developments as well. Again, you see the loop here over the last hour, how things are developing. We are going to see more development, and this area that is right now working across the James River over towards Newport News around Menchville, you're about to get hit. Let's take a look at this again one more time. I mentioned it is moving to the uh, east at about 35 miles per hour. So I'm going to put this kind of leading edge on this really intense rainfall moving towards Menchville and I'll run it out through Picosin, giving you a feel for the timing on this. Again, we're doing this live in real time just so you get a, a sense for what's going on. Menchville around 1122, Oyster Point 1124, Grafton 1129, the arrival of this more intense rainfall. And when we talk about the rain coming down, Let's take a look at the rainfall rate. I'm just going to pick a spot here right in the heart of that red. By radar estimate, 2.74 inches of rain per hour. Now, if this was a slow mover, this would be a big problem. But the fact that it's moving along at about 35 miles per hour gives me some uh, encouragement that maybe we won't deal so much with flooding from this particular cell if it keeps moving. What I do think could happen and what I'm more concerned with is that we're going to get this thing kind of filling in and increasing coverage. So as the whole line moves through our area, we get some more development. If the development becomes more widespread, that's where you could get a more prolonged period where if you pick up an inch to an inch and a half of rain, say in a 20 minute or 30 minute span, then we're talking about the potential for some flood advisories to come up or maybe some small stream urban flood advisories, different things like that, maybe a flood warning, not out of the question. So 
We are by no means saying that it's absolutely going to happen, but that's the potential. And with the heat and humidity out ahead of that front coming through, that's what the big concern is. All right, we're going to go back again to our other uh, view here and get back into the maps, talk a little bit more about this as this is continuing to move along pretty quickly here to about 35 miles per hour. Now let me pull back out and show you some more of that development around the ocean front. Aside from that, it's not looking too bad. You can see all the lightning detected offshore. This was some of the storms we were seeing earlier. A lot of lightning early this morning coming in. It was really something. So you can see again, and let me just put a quick lightning count on this. Let's see if we get anything there. That should count our lightning strikes for us. You can see uh, just within the last half hour or so, 448 lightning strikes. Now that's offshore, so that's good news. That is not happening over our area. This little cluster here, we've only had uh, about five or six strikes near the sand bridge area, but it only takes one to hit, you know, maybe a transformer. It takes one, obviously, you know, God forbid it hits somebody or something, but you know, when you have lightning out there, it is very dangerous and we're always concerned with everybody's safety and well-being. So really want to make folks aware of the fact that we could see some more lightning developing. Now, currently, as we take a look, I'm going to switch up the view here and let's get into our uh, chances for more wet weather later today. You can see down again, southern parts of Virginia Beach, south of Pungo, down around Vine, headed towards over say Munden Point, some of those areas, you're going to be dealing with some wet weather. It was raining to beat the band down around Knott's Island earlier this morning. Right now you're enjoying a break. The rest of the Outer Banks not looking too bad right now. As we take a look here, let's jump ahead and show you where that front is located. Again, just off to the northwest of the area, but coming through. So with that, we're going to see chances for showers and storms that are going to be likely with the passing front. It's warm and humid. We still have the chances for some very heavy rain. We'll see clearing skies overnight. Not as muggy. Temperatures near the coast in the low 70s. We'll see low 60s inland tomorrow. 90 degrees, mostly sunny, hot, but not as humid. On Wednesday, we're back up to 96, so another hot and humid day. Heat index values back between 100 and 103. So some more dangerous heat and humidity there. I think isolated storms, maybe isolated to scattered storms on Thursday and into Friday. That's going to give us some uh, cooler readings as we finish out the work week. And we do need the rain. Keep in mind our drought monitor right now, it is showing conditions out there uh, pretty rough as we go. So we just want folks to be mindful that we are dry right now. We're not really in a, a serious drought or anything like that, but we do still have the very dry conditions. So again, this is a look at the conditions out there. We want everybody to be mindful that we could see some strong to severe storms. We're only under a level one threat, but it is certainly something that we are concerned with and we'll continue to watch that for you here at 13 News Now. We continue with our weather alert day. Once that cold front that's off to the northwest is clear of the area, that's when we're going to feel a lot better and say, hey, we're in good shape. But with the risk of storms again, we do want to make sure everybody is weather aware and staying up on the potential threats. We'll take one more look here at the uh, impacts. Again, we're talking very warm and muggy conditions. Right now we have the potential for dangerous lightning and heavy downpours. There is just a level one threat for severe storms, but that includes Isle of Wight, Southampton, Franklin, Suffolk, Chesapeake, Virginia Beach, Norfolk, Portsmouth, and all of our viewership down in Northeast North Carolina. Level one threat for severe weather, but it is something that we certainly keep a close eye to here at 13 News Now, and we just want to make sure everybody is aware and takes it easy. So important that you know uh, that is the concern. So we'll continue to watch that again here at 13 News Now. We want to make sure everybody is aware and we will keep you updated. Be sure and join Taylor Stephenson today at noon on the air live on 13 News Now at noon. Evan Stewart will be working this evening starting at 5 o'clock. But Taylor, she's going to be watching those showers and storms for you on 13 News Now at noon. And she may be busy tracking those storms. I'm sure she will be. Storms may become more intense for her and Evan a little bit later this afternoon. But I think as we get into the evening hours around supper time and after that, things should be improving. And we will definitely look forward to the lower humidity coming up tomorrow. 
Again, for everybody here at 13 News Now, we appreciate you guys tuning in. We will work to keep you updated. I'm meteorologist Craig Moeller for 13 News Now.